Rambam Mishneh Torah, one chapter a day. Arachim V'charamim, chapter 5. When a person consecrates his ancestral field, if it is a mitzvah for him to redeem it, for the owner receives priority. If, however, he does not desire to do so, we do not compel him. When does the above apply? In the era that the Jubilee is observed. For if the Jubilee arrives and he does not redeem it, it will be expropriated for the sake of the priests, as we explained. In the era when the Jubilee has been nullified and it is not expropriated for the sake of the priests, but instead will ultimately be redeemed, we compel the owner to make an initial bid and it is redeemed for its worth, like other consecrated articles. If someone who is willing to add to the bid to redeem it, he may redeem it. If not, we tell him it has come to you and he must give what he bid. He may not make an opening bid for less than four prorot, for prutot, so that the fifth that he will add will not be less than a pruta. Halakha 2. If the owner desired to sell other fields that he owned or to borrow to redeem this field that he, consecrate, that he consecrated, he has permission to do so. This applies whether he consecrated the field during the time the Jubilee is observed or when it is not observed. He is given precedence over others. Similarly, if he desired to redeem half of it, he may. This contrasts with the laws that apply when one sells a field to an ordinary person. This is the greatest stringency that applies with regard to ordinary property and not to the temple treasury. Halakha 3. When a person consecrates his home, a non-kosher animal or other property, they are evaluated for their worth, whether it be high or low. If the person who consecrated them, his wife or his heirs, redeem them, they must add a fifth. We compel the owner to make the first bid. The money is set aside for improvements to the temple. The above applies whether the house was from a walled city or from an unwalled habitation. The owner may redeem it at all times. Halakha 4. The following rules apply if another person redeemed it from the temple treasury. If the home was within a walled city and it remained in the, in the possession of the redeemer for 12 months, it becomes the pro his property forever. If the home was located in an unwalled habitation and the Jubilee arrived while it was in the possession of the Redeemer, it returns to its owner in the Jubilee. Halakha 5 When a person consecrates an unblemished kosher animal for the sake of improvements to the temple, he has transgressed a positive commandment. Nevertheless, the deed he performed is of consequence and sanctity is conveyed upon the animal. It is redeemed even though it is unblemished, the priest establishes its worth, and the money is given for improvements to the temple. The person who redeems it redeems it only for the sake of offering it on the altar for the type of sacrifice for which it is fitting. This is required because any consecrated entity that is fit for the altar is never released from the obligation to be sacrificed on the altar. Halakha 6 What is the source that teaches that it is forbidden to consecrate unblemished animals for the improvement of the temple? Vaikra 22.23 states, An ox or a sheep that has irregularly sized limbs or unsplit hoofs, it shall be consecrated as a donation. According to the oral tradition, we have learned that the term donation implies that it is consecrated for improvements to the temple. Similarly, the situation indicates that it was consecrated only for its worth, for a blemished animal is not offered on the altar. This is donate, denoted by the term it, i.e. it is consecrated for improvements to the temple but an unblemished animal should not be consecrated as a donation for improvements to the temple. A prohibition derived from a positive commandment has the status of a positive commandment. Halakha 7. The following rules apply when a person consecrates an animal without making any specifications or consecrates his property without making any specifications. We survey all the unblemished animals that are fit to be offered on the altar. The males should be sold for the purpose of burnt offerings and offered as burnt offerings. The females are sold for the purpose of peace offerings and offerings as peace, and offered as peace offerings. The proceeds of the sales should be given for improvements to the temple. For unless explicit specification is made, all consecrated articles are for the sake of the improvement of the temple. Concerning this, Vaikra 27.9 states, If it is an animal which can be offered as a sacrifice to God, all parts of it that you can give to God shall be holy. 
implied is that every entity that is fit to be offered as a sacrifice on the altar should be offered on the altar. Halakha 8 When a person consecrates his possessions without making any specifications, and among them are wine, oil, wine, flour, sorry, wine, oil, fine flour, and doves that are fit to be offered on the altar, they should be sold for the purpose of offerings that employ them, and they should be offered, the money should be used to purchase male animals that should be brought as burnt offerings. Halakha 9 Why should the proceeds from these sales be used to bring burnt offerings, and the proceeds from the sale of an, unble un of an unblemished animal be used for improvements to the temple? The rationale is that when an animal is consecrated to the altar, is that when an animal is consecrated to the altar suffers a disqualifying blemish, there is a concept of it being redeemed, as will be explained. When by contrast fine flour, wine, oil and dust become unfit for the altar, there is no concept of redeeming them. This is derived from Vaikra twenty seven, eleven to twelve, which states You shall have the animal stand before the priest, and the priest shall evaluate it. Implied is that any entity that is stood before a priest and evaluated may be redeemed. If any entity is not to be stood before a priest and evaluated, it may not be redeemed. Halakha 10. When a person consecrates his possessions without making any specifications, and among them was incense which is given to the craftsmen for their wages until they return and purchase it, as we explained in Hilchot Shkalim, it should be given to the craftsmen for their wages as is done with the remainder of the incense. These guidelines are also followed when one of the spices used in the incense offering is found among his possessions. Halakha 11 When a person consecrates an unblemished animal as a sacrifice to be offered on the altar and it became blemished and was disqualified, it should be evaluated and redeemed. Concerning this, Vaikra 27.11 states, When any impure animal of which a sacrifice should not be brought as an offering to God, you shall have the animal stand before the priest. He shall bring another sacrifice equivalent to it with its money. Whenever a person halacha twelve, whenever a person consecrates an animal in its lifetime, whether a kosher animal or a non-kosher one, whether it was consecrated for the sake of the temple treasury, it was consecrated to be offered on the altar and it became blemished, or it is an unblemished animal which is fit to be offered as a sacrifice, as will be explained. It must be stood before the court for evaluation, as implied by the phrase, "You shall have the animal stand before the priest." Therefore, if the animal died before it is evaluated and redeemed, it should not be redeemed. Instead, it should be buried. If, however, a person consecrated a slaughtered animal, or an animal carcass for the sake of improvements to the temple, it should be redeemed like other movable property. Halakha 13 In the above situation, if one slaughtered the animal, slitting the two organs necessary for the slaughter to be acceptable, or slit the majority of these organs, but the animal is still making convulsive movements, it is considered as alive with regard to all matters. It may be evaluated in the provisions implied by the phrases you shall have, stand and, shall evaluate, apply until it, until it dies. Halakha 14. When a person consecrates the worth of an unblemished animal, the body of the animal becomes consecrated. What is implied? When a person says, the worth of this animal is consecrated to the altar, the animal sh itself should be sacrificed. When one consecrates the worth of one of its limbs or organs, saying, The worth of the feet of this cow consecrated to the altar, there is an unresolved question. Does the sanctity spread throughout the animal or not? Therefore it should be sacrificed and not be and not redeemed. Halakha 15. What should be done? We sell it 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 in its entirety to a person who will offer it as a sacrifice. The proceeds of the sale are not consecrated with the exception of those of that particular limb. If the limb or organ consecrated was of vital importance to the animal, the sanctity is considered to spread throughout the entire animal. Halakha 16. Different rules apply if the animal consecrated was blemished and unfit to be offered as a sacrifice. When one consecrates one of its limbs or organs, whether it, is, whether it is one of vital importance or not, only that limb becomes consecrated. What is implied? A person said, The worth of the foot of this cow, or the worth of its heart, is consecrated to the altar. He and the temple treasury own it in partnership. Halakha 17. Similarly, if a person says the head of this servant, or the heart of this donkey, is consecrated to the altar, he is liable only for the worth of the limb, 
or organ mentioned. Similarly, if he says my head is consecrated to the altar, he is liable only for the worth of its head. We see how much that limb or organ is worth, and he must bring a sacrifice for that amount. When does the above apply? With regard to animals consecrated to the altar. If, however, a person says the head of this donkey, or its liver is consecrated, or the head of this servant, or his liver is consecrated, since his life is dependent on that organ, he is liable for its entire worth. For whenever an entity is consecrated for improvements to the temple, the consecration involves the entity's worth. Halakha 19. When a person says, I pledge my erech to the altar, he must bring sacrifices of the value of his erech. If he is not financially capable of giving his entire erech, there is an unresolved question. Is his evaluation appraised according to his financial capacity, for he made his pledge using the term erech, or do we not appraise his financial capacity since he made his vow to the altar? Similarly, when a person consecrates his ancestral field to the altar, it should be redeemed and the proceeds should be used to purchase burnt offerings for the altar. There is an unresolved question. Should it be redeemed according to the fixed erech established for it, or should it be redeemed according to its value, since he made his vow to the altar? In all these and similar instances, we rule stringently.